Hello everyone, the video number 3 about uh, the switch in IC today. So let's see some uh, examples of the switch in IC. They are different shape, different size, different number of the pins. This one here, that's a 6 pin. This one here is a switch in IC, is a 32 pin. This one here is a 8 pin. This big one here is a switch in IC as well. So we are going to talk about this part here between the switch in IC and the MOSFETs. Yeah. About basics of it. So the switch in IC. This one here. Let's start. Uh, let's give this pin name. VCC this voltage that's what is uh, feeding the switch in IC to start work each IC is need some power to work and let's see this pen is the ground this is the driver they are could be a different names and we have the feedback yeah the other pens could be like used for the the overload and other functions that we're not going to talk about them uh, now so we want to keep it simple and we take these four pens so about the vcc this chip usually it work uh, with the 12 volt most of the time 12 volt 16 volt around that you may find some ic's they work about five 5 volts as well so let's see here the common one is a 12 volt this pen here that's the pen is giving the wave to the MOSFET to turn on and off uh, source drain and the gauge and this one which will go to the gauge is going to give the wave here to the gauge here we're going to have 160 volt or 390 or whatever voltage we have in the source like a DC stable and here we're going to have the same shape of these waves but is 160 volt like so the same time from here to here we're going to find it here but here the top is 160 volt example the top here and the feedback we're going to talk about it later usually you close to the switch in IC you're going to find the capacitor that's filtering the VCC power like this one here this capacitor here that's the one is filtering the VCC for the IC this switch in IC we're gonna find the capacitor here this switch in IC this switch in IC here we're gonna find the capacitor the other side and the take capacitor is about uh, 50 volt. It doesn't mean that uh, the 50 volt is going to the IC, but just they put the capacitor higher, so can uh, can stay good for long. Like in this uh, capacitor, going to check the voltage, the VCC voltage here on this capacitor. And we need to see the voltage is uh, like stable, 12 volt or uh, whatever the voltage is given to this pen, it should be stable. And if it's not, the IC won't work. And I think I have a, I just supposed a video about like a week ago or so. Uh, is a subwoofer uh, power supply that we find the capacitor 
that feed in the switching IC, the VCC, it was the capacitor was open. The capacitance of this capacitor was very low. The VCC wasn't uh, stable and the IC wasn't working. So I changed that, that capacitor. The power supply started working again. It's uh, very important to check this capacitor here. This is going to the gauge. Another big issue that you s usually you see in the, in the power uh, supply, when the MOSFETs uh, burn it, you check the MOSFET, you find there is a shirt between the source and the drain and the source and the gauge. Then you change the MOSFET, you put a new MOSFET, the MOSFET burn it again. This is, this is what usually happen. Yeah, could be the MOSFET is go back by itself and this shortage between the source and the drain and the source and the gauge. You measure here there is a short, you measure here short, you measure here short. This is a bad uh, case because if there is 160 volt goes here and this one is go to the transformer, the first coil and it's go to the to the ground of the the transformer is connected to the ground of the capacitor the capacitor connected to the ground of the rectify bridge the fuse is going to be blown so what happened is when the the mosfet is shorted so it's mean from here to the mosfet is shorted here there is a, just a wire we have just a wire from here to here We have just a wire from here to here. And that's gonna put a big load in the rectify bridge. If the rectify bridge doesn't go open, the fuse is gonna burn. So this is one case. The bad case is before the fuse is burned, the MOSFET is shorted between the source and the gauge and send the voltage to here and imagine there is 160 volt it's go because here is just a wire now the MOSFET is short it is become like a wire the 160 volt it's go to this little chip you see this little chip that's handle about like it work with the 12 volt now there is 160 volt going in it. That chip is going to burn. When this chip is burned, the VCC is come like one wire. This 12 volt of VCC is go to this drain. It's beside we have a wave like this, we're going to have a 12 volt DC. That 12 volt if we change the MOSFET without checking around the switch and IC and the roundage measure here to be sure there is no shortage between VCC and the drive, this 12 volt is going to go to the gate. The new MOSFET is good. It's going to allow the voltage to go here. And because there is just a DC here, there is no wave. And from here is going to go to the coil, is going to go to the to the ground of the rectify bridge. It will be a short circuit. The MOSFET is going to get hot, it's going to burn, the fuse is going to burn again. So this is a common issue. If you did see some of my videos, when I change the MOSFET, I start checking these little parts, the diodes, transistors, around the switch and IC. And this is why. The other pins of the ICs, they are for like uh, the input voltage detection, the high voltage. Sometimes you find the, like each V here, high voltage detection, and you find the uh, PR like uh, overload uh, protection. And this pin, there is a different names you're gonna find here. Even the the drive, you may find the some chip. They give it a name, CRT. When you have to make the job easy, when you have the problem with the chip, you need to look for the data sheet of that uh, chip to be sure it uh, depends what they are doing. 
for this all until see you next one